I'll uh, get started uh, with a summary of what I'm going to talk about uh, in case you want to bail out. Um, I'm going to have a small presentation of you know, the background and, and related standards about that where Istio and DNS interact. I'll uh, describe briefly how uh, Istio implemented its own DNS um, resolver, its own DNS solution. And I'll go over the use cases where Istio is most affected by DNS, which is security, multi-cluster, and um, egress with service entries. And for each of them, I'll try to do kind of a balanced approach with, with the options and the different trade-offs for each solution. And hopefully, um, give you some ideas that you can use in your own uh, deployments. Um, DNS is a very, very old protocol, uh, 83, first RFC published. It's one of the ossified protocols, meaning that it's still in use today exactly as it was there, more or less. Uh, very difficult to change. A lot of uh, people have used and abused DNS in many ways. Uh, like all the old protocols, security was not part of the original design. It was retrofitted later um, as DNS security extensions, and far later, uh, thanks to privacy concerns and browsers' devices in 2016-18, um, the DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS uh, were introduced. Uh, related standards, uh, again, 95 IPsec, HTTP 1.1, also without security in, in uh, 97, and finally HTTPS uh, 2000. Uh, as an idea, out of 150 million .com domains, about 6 million are currently signed. But that's actually very good because many of the .com domains are just basically uh, vanity domains or, or, or squatting. So 6 million signed domains is actually a good number. Uh, and we'll see why, why signing domains and using those protocols is very important for, for Istio users and for all mesh users, actually. Uh, as Concept, again, reminder, uh, DNS is a top-down protocol. Uh, it's based on authoritative name servers that uh, basically own a domain. It starts from root servers, goes to top-level domains like com, fr, and so forth. And the authority is delegated down to, to subdomain and to, 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 to authority servers. Uh, API server is also kind of a source of truth for all the names in Kubernetes, and it has an associated DNS, which is, again, clustered local um, equivalent of the authority in the Internet. Then on the other side, there are the recursive resolvers, which are actually the, one, the, the resolvers that go to the top-level routes, go down and find the actual entries that you're looking for. And that's where usually, hopefully, uh, DNS signatures are are validated, and a lot of other features are, are implemented that, that we'll, discuss, uh, we'll discuss later. Um, next, non-recursive resolvers, or, um, which are usually just caches running on your VM or on your uh, physical machine. Um, and their main role in, in modern DNS is to secure the communication between uh, the host and the recursive resolvers. Uh, and finally, stub resolvers uh, or client libraries that are linked into your application and usually just don't do too much. But we recently we've seen people adding more features and more security to the, to the client libraries. Uh, in DNS, we'll, some common terms is split horizon where uh, the external view of a domain is different than the internal view of the domain. Uh, private DNS where the um, uh, resolvers, usually the recursive resolvers, create their own internal domains that are only visible inside your organization. And of course, DNS hijacking, spoofing, which has been around for, again, 30, 40 years. Uh, DNS is one of the most, uh, um, you know, misused protocols uh, by internet providers and by, by, by a lot of attackers. Uh, there are many implementations of DNS. I'll mention BIND, which is still in use today. First release, 1986. It was rewritten a few times, but um, uh, DNS Mask 2001 is probably the most popular because all routers, uh, most phones, uh, it's still used in Kubernetes. Um, then Power DNS Unbound and a lot of um, high performance. The DNS community generally prefers to have many implementations, so you know we have diversity of implementations. So the 
CVs and bugs are not affecting the entire internet. Um, most recently, Core DNS, which is a default DNS server in, in, in Kubernetes. Stubby is an interesting one, which is just a plain DNS to DNS over TLS, providing security. And of course, Istio DNS, which uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, soon. Uh, one uh, side note, there is DNS over TLS that is providing security, but there is also tunneling over DNS which is, uh, again, also from the late 90s. Uh, people figured it out that you can, just like we do tunnel over HTTP2 in the tunnel, you can do tunnel over DNS requests. You basically encode your packets as DNS requests, looking from, from the external from, from, from resolver as a DNS request. You send it to the authoritative server. It disguises the responses as DNS responses. And you establish a communication channel that can be used to bypass firewalls, network policies, and a lot of things. Many people forgot about this. It's, it's not very uh, well advertised, but it's still working perfectly fine. There are iodine or what, some other solutions that work perfectly fine for this purpose. And for people who remember this, usually they mitigate by blocking the external DNS access. And that impacts a bit Istio. Again, few of us probably have to deal with this, but it may happen. And then, of course, DNS will be blamed. Um, again, SOX and HTTP proxy protocols are designed to avoid applications having to do DNS requests. So they, they do the resolution on the proxy. Application doesn't do any DNS. And uh, usually, when you do this, you need to be careful and block you know, to not have any recursive resolver that is running somewhere that can be used as a way to bypass the firewalls. Um, on Istio's side, we implemented this DNS, uh, DNS uh, stub. It is a stub from the DNS terminology. Um, it is enabled at uh, pod level or in a VM, if you're running in VM. Uh, through some environment variables. You can look it up in the documentation. There is a lot of doc in our, on our site. Um, you can also enable it globally for the entire uh, mesh. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, first of all, we are not using DNS over TLS. We used it in early days. We use DNS over XDS in order to optimize and to take advantage of the existing connection between agent and STOD. Uh, it's still over. TLS, but with some, uh, some layers in between. Uh, Istio DNS is not a recursive resolver and is not a validating resolver. It always falls back to the, to the platform resolver for any names that it doesn't know. So if it's not a cluster or local name, or it's not something that you have in a service entry, the platform resolver will be invoked and hopefully it's secure because, or, or you're not using um, egress. Um, as an alternative to Istio DNS, you can use a platform resolver. So platform resolver is what you find in, in, in you know, most cloud vendors. They provide some APIs to configure private DNS zones and provide a re resolver infrastructure. Most cases, you, I, mean, I, I can bet you have a secure DNS infrastructure already because, again, there are 40 years of DNS and people figure it out that uh, they need security. Uh, but it's useful to check that, that um, you know, your DNS infrastructure is set up properly. You have, you know, it's scaled up properly. It, it is using um, access controls. Um, and most recently, I mean, thanks to ACME protocol and, and some others, there are a lot of libraries now that allow programmatic access to DNS. Um, external DNS is an example of uh, in, in, to using Kubernetes APIs to program DNS. So uh, you probably want to check what options you have available because we'll discuss some automations that you, you can use with, um, to take advantage of the existing resolve infrastructure. Uh, let me start with the first use case and the reason we started to implement DNS in Istio, which is uh, security. Uh, security, you usually think about how do you authenticate a client, but the first step is, to, is client to authenticate the server. So if you talk with example.com, your application will make a DNS request, will get back a response. Uh, Istio and pretty much all meshes that rely on IP table interception will look at the address, find a listener, then match it with a cluster where you find the identity you need to check. Now, this is working perfectly. MTLS will do all the validation and everything is good, but if the DNS is returning the wrong address, 
then Istio will have no idea that you actually wanted to talk with example.com and not evil.com. So Istio will take the address that it gets from IP table, will validate the certificate of evil.com, which is apparently what the user wants to talk with, and then um, things go wrong. Uh, again, nothing new, nothing unique. This has been a known since, again, 90s, uh, but it's important to be aware and, and to always make sure you have secure DNS infrastructure. It is not a problem from HTTP, HTTPS, because uh, the host header is used to, to decide where to, what certificate to validate. And it's not a problem from proxyless gRPC, SOX, HTTP proxy, which, again, do not use IP at all. They use FQDNs. Um, as I mentioned, almost everyone has a secure DNS infrastructure in the cloud, so it's not something that, that you should be, uh, you know, scared about this use case. Again, it's well known. Uh, Istio DNS was introduced in case for users who have their own setup with, you know, on Raspberry Pis or, or kind of uh, off-prem, and they lack the secure DNS infrastructure. Um, in which case it's very, very useful to, to, to either enable Istio DNS or to get a secure DNS resolver. Um, the second use case for Istio and DNS is uh, the multi-cluster and uh, name visibility. In, in uh, Kubernetes, as you know, cluster local means local to a cluster. There is a core DNS server that is taking care of uh, resolving the names inside the cluster for the pods running in the cluster. If you have a VM or if you have another cluster, the name has no signification for it. It, has no, no, it doesn't exist. So what do we do? Uh, people have tried different hacks, but in the end, Istio D is watching all the clusters, and we can aggregate all the services from all the clusters and provide it to the resolver that we, we uh, run in the agent. Um, this is... Good or bad, again, there are, there are people who believe it's very convenient, and I completely agree, it's a very nice feature. Uh, on the other side, it combines all the names from all the clusters in a big mesh that is, um, uh, you know, called cluster the local, and may not be ideal for all situations. And it requires using Istio DNS, which again, it's a relatively new product, new implementation, unlike Bind, which has many, many years of experience. Uh, the other option that, that you have is to use the platform resolver. Um, in um, that case, you are using some automation tool like Terraform or, or, or whatever you want to use to program the platform DNS resolver with, uh, with a private zone. Uh, you can use a name like clusterset.local. Well, this is taken by, by uh, Kubernetes multi-cluster, but you can use example.com or prod.example.com. You can program only the names that you actually care about, that you need to be shared across clusters. Not all the services need to be programmed. And you'll be able to use your own uh, domain, like prod.mycompany.com instead of cluster.local. Um, and then you'll use, obviously, service entry to make sure that uh, your domain names are known to each, uh, to each cluster. Um, it's not very complicated Kubernetes. It's also the approach that Kubernetes multi-cluster is taking to, by defining the cluster set.local, which is defined as a zone that is visible to all clusters in, in, in a, in a multi-cluster environment. Now, finally, we get to the interesting part, um, TCP egress and egress in general. Um, let's say you have a mesh, you want to talk with an external uh, provide an internal site, let's say www.example.com, which has two IP addresses, two public IP addresses. Um, for SNI, HTTPS, and HTTP, usually we have the host header that has www.example.com, and we can we know exactly where to go. But for TCP and 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 for Istio interception, all we can use for for deciding what policies to apply is the IP address returned by DNS. Um, DNS, modern DNS, is used for a lot of things. I mean, it's used for load balancing. It's used for, uh, to, in order to make sure that the client gets an IP of a data center that is close by regionally. Um, it's also used with any cast, and, and, and usually uh, IPs are 
massively reused. I mean, it's, you know, we are short on IPs those days, so, so uh, most content distribution networks don't give an IP to each customer. So it is very difficult to get a unique ID, IP in order to apply the policies. Um, and that's where Istio DNS is actually at its most, uh, uh, provides the most power. Uh, the solution in Istio is obviously to create a service entry with the name of the domain and assign a VIP, some, some IPs that will be used in the policies. When we do this, Istio will know that 10.1.1.3 is actually the external site you want to apply policies to. However, you still need DNS to resolve tcpexample.com to this address instead of the address that it's normally resolved, which is, again, unpredictable. Um, to make things even more interesting, that's what application needs to resolve. If the request goes to the sidecar, Envoy obviously needs to go to the actual destination, so it will need to resolve to the real address. So we need a way to have DNS returns two different results, one to uh, the application and one to Envoy. And that's pretty much what Istio DNS is doing. It's intercepting the DNS only for the application. DNS from Envoy is excluded. Everything works relatively fine. But um, we solve the problem, but we introduce another small problem in that now we have a way for any namespace owner to hijack and to inject arbitrary IPs into the DNS, which is, the, if you remember a few slides back, not something that we want. Um, so if you have those kind of use cases and you enable this to your DNS, please add, use all power, use favorite uh, validations to make sure that um, whoever is allowed to create um, service entries, there are sufficient controls in place, you know, either by, by restricting them to a single namespace or by validating the host names that are pushed or reviews or, or, or any other technology to, um, you know, prevent misused. Also, it's very useful to segregate HTTP from TCP and to use dedicated TCP ports for uh, all external services. If you use a dedicated port, IP no longer matters, so you can, you can apply policies based on port only. And if you have HTTP segregated from TCP, HTTP will, policies will be based on host without, again, IP no longer matters. Uh, with those mitigations in place, you can use a platform resolver instead of Istio DNS if you choose to. Um, and another option that, uh, that exists is for, for egress in particular is to actually set the environment variable necessary to enable SOX or HTTP proxy, in which case all the policies will be applied in the, in the actual egress gateway and, and you avoid all the DNS lookups and many DNS problems. Um, I also mentioned a solution for this particular problem that, again, it's perhaps complicated, but, but it's, it's very clean, uh, which is to create a private zone, again, under your own prod.example.com, and create subdomains for the external names, separating the front end, which will be, you know, external domain dot egress dot example.com, so basically under your own control, and that's what the application will talk with. So modify the application config to, to talk with this new domain. This you can control, you can resolve it however you want. It's, it's under your control and, and, and uh, as I mentioned, usually there are all kind of uh, access controls for, uh, for um, the private DNS. And Envoy will, when you write the, the virtual service, you will actually go to the actual DNS. So we, we avoid all the problems um, related with application and avoid needing different results for the DNS query. Um, and as an extra benefit, you get to use the infrastructure DNS, which usually is, again, more mature and more, more uh, you have audit logs, you have all kind of uh, telemetry and, and stuff. Um, that's, those are the three use cases that, uh, that uh, are most important. There are other implications for DNS. Uh, since everyone is talking about Ambient, um, I want to clarify a bit. Ambient also provides a DNS stub, so it, it has a resolver. It behaves slightly different from, from the normal uh, Istio agent DNS resolver in the sense that obviously Ambient is per node, 
So you, we lose the ability to dif return different DNS results to different pods by creative use of service entries, export to sidecar import, and all the other tricks that probably we all know and love. Um, and uh, the rest, again, segregation between HTTP and TCP doesn't help too much because waypoints are producer side, so by the time it gets to the waypoint, client no longer has any, any uh, um, control. Uh, but a nice thing is that uh, ZTunnel has built-in support for SOX. So if you set SOX protocol, you pretty much solve all the problems. You don't even need interception. It goes straight. It's, it's the most straightforward way with the price of an environment variable set on your uh, application to, to enable SOX. Uh, and few thoughts about the future because we're out of time. Um, DNS has evolved a lot over the years. I mean, we know about resolving name to IP, but in reality, DNS is used to distribute certificates. You can use it for SSH uh, uh, public key distribution. Uh, Dane, which is a way to publish certificates or uh, hash of the certificate in DNS. Uh, the DOT, DOH standards, which hopefully will you know, kind of see more adoption and, and um, more validation, perhaps in Istio agent. Um, keep in mind, I mean, keep, uh, keep track of DNS because uh, it is a very critical infrastructure component and, and uh, usually when something broke, breaks, probably DNS plays a role as well. So um, that's it. Questions, please. Question for custom. We have a few more minutes. Oh, hi. Uh, sorry if it, it is a uh, too specific question. However, uh, we use the, the DNS interception uh, provided by Envoy in Istio, but uh, we couldn't find the Prometheus uh, metrics to understand better if it's working correctly, how fast it is, the errors, and so on. Is there any or if there is, how can I enable it? I'm sorry for that. Well, again, Istio DNS is a relatively new technology in terms of DNS history. We do not have a lot of those extras. Uh, hopefully, there will be contributors who will add them. Um, what can I do? Uh, but if you use an infrastructure resolver instead, most likely you'll have pretty much every, all the telemetry you want, plus audits, plus a lot of other stuff. Trade-offs. Yeah, great question. Uh, any other questions from the audience? All right, at this minute, I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, I want to thank Costing again for a great deep dive on Istio and DNS. Thank you so much. Okay.